Hey, welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here. You know, it's the beginning of the month and there's something that I do at the beginning of every month. Well, I try to do it at the beginning of every month. It's something I should do at the beginning of the month. And this comes up as a calendar reminder for me. And uh, what it is, is I like to run my generator once a month for about 15 minutes, just to make sure everything is prepared in the event that I need to use the generator. I also wanna show you my portable backup generator and how I use it with my house. I've had this Generac XT8000E for about five years. It produces 8,000 watts with 10,000 starting watts. It has standard 120 volt outlets, but it also has this 220 volt 30 amp outlet, and that's what we use to feed the house. Now, before I start it, there's a couple things I check. There's no reason for the crankcase not to have oil in it as it sits here, and there was no dripping on the ground, so I can be pretty sure there's oil and plenty in there. I can look down in there, plus I can check the stick here, wipe that off and check it, but uh, I can see that it's got plenty of oil in it, so we're good to go there. And then we just wanna check the fuel level. This one's nice because it has an actual fuel gauge. There's a float inside the tank. It has a half a tank. I usually keep this topped off with fuel treatments, but obviously I ran this uh, for some reason and never topped it back off again. So it's got a half a tank of gas. It holds about five to seven gallons, I forget exactly. Uh, so I've got half a tank of gas, which is okay to run our test. I also like to check the air filter during my monthly test, just to make sure that there's no critters who have nested inside or gotten inside or done any damage. Or even in the summertime, you could have mud wasps and whatnot getting inside. This one has a pretty simple foam filter and it all looks good. So that's all we need to do to make sure that the air filter is okay. Put that back together. There's a label on the gas tank indicating the choke position, but I made myself another label here just to make it easier for myself. And I used a good old magic marker to mark the fuel valve. And there's a shutdown procedure that I do as well after I run the generator test. Now this generator has a recoil start and it starts pretty easily. It also has electric start. Now my battery died probably a year or two ago, so I've been using the recoil start, but let me show you the electric start as well. So this came with a small battery. It's one of those lead cell or dry cell batteries, the ones you used to see in emergency lights and whatnot. So I didn't keep this topped off. What I would normally do is, is put the trickle charger on this also once a month, but it just didn't last. What's kind of weird about this is that it doesn't self-charge the battery. You actually have to plug the battery in here and charge it. Now, what I used to do while I was running it is I would plug the charger into the generator itself, plug that in, and therefore hopefully charge the battery. But maybe I should leave this on all the time, a trickle charger, maybe that's what, what that's meant for. I never did that, so I lost the battery. Uh, but when you use electric start, you simply turn the switch to on and go from off to run to start, but as you can see, it's dead. But I think this will be a good opportunity to try out that Gulu Jump Pack. I showed you this Gulu Jump Pack in my last video. We started the tractor and the Jeep with it, but I wonder how it will work on something like this. Let's give it a try. If I can just get these big old clamps on here. Got the green light indicating that we're good to go, so let's see what happens. I hit this on off switch a moment ago to show you the starting sequence, but I wasn't paying attention. This is the idle control, not the on off. This is all you need for on off right here. So after it warms up a bit, I can turn off the idle control and let this thing really rev up. It 
these open frame generators are by no means quiet, which is why they're not good for camping and whatnot. But you know, for a home backup generator, if you're out here in the country, it's not so bad. And what I often do is I'll put it in the garage with the exhaust facing out and I'll close that garage door about halfway. And that way the generator is protected from the elements, but it's still able to breathe and throw the fumes out of the garage. And I don't work in the garage while it's working. So I'll show you now how I connect it to the house. Now after running this for 10 or 15 minutes, I don't just turn it off, I turn the fuel off and let the carburetor drain down and choke out the motor. Now, if you really want to drain the carburetor out fully, there's a screw right at the bottom here. You take this out and that'll just dribble a few drops of gas. I have not done that and I've not had any problems with this generator. So I think having the fuel stabilizer in there and then running it like I do monthly, I think that really helps it. Now about 15, 20 feet away from the generator, I have this generator inlet that back feeds my panel from the generator. So this is a pretty standard NEMA 30 amp plug. Just pushes in and it turns about an eighth inch, quarter inch. All right, that's the generator side of things. So let's go take a look at the panel. Now, I don't know electrical codes, but I do know that the proper way to hook up a generator is to use a transfer switch. Back feeding your panel or back feeding through an outlet is really, really frowned upon because the problem is if you do that and it's not disconnected from the main power, you could be back feeding the whole system and electrocute whatever line worker is out there working. So it's really dangerous, not recommended, and may not even be code or legal. But I have a setup on this house that works pretty well. It's safe and, you know, again, I'm not recommending it. I'm just showing you how this one works. The way this system works is that generator inlet is wired to this 30 amp breaker. And this 30 amp breaker then therefore back feeds all these other breakers. What's neat about this is it has this plate installed here. So I can't turn on the generator breaker unless I slide this plate up. And I can't slide this plate up unless I turn off the main power to the entire house. So first you turn off the main power, slide this plate up, and then turn the generator on. And again, that back feeds all these breakers. Now as an added precaution, before I turn that generator breaker on, I turn off all these other breakers and I turn on the generator and then I start turning breakers on one at a time. There are certain breakers I've marked in red here that I don't turn on at all while running the generator. And that's like the air handler and the uh, AC condenser because the generator simply won't run them. But I'm able to run all of our other essentials like the refrigerator and the freezers to keep our food cold and frozen. I'm able to run my well pump. And again, all the essentials that we need. What's great about having this backup generator is that in the winter time, I still have heat. I still have hot water. And most importantly, I'm able to run my sump pumps here in the basement. There was a time when I didn't have a generator and we lost power for two days. And with that, I was out here trying to shovel out uh, water from the basement. This is not a finished basement, obviously, but still there's nothing worse than having two to four inches of water in your basement. So with this now we can run the sumps, we can run the refrigerator, the freezers, again, hot water, showers, everything we need. And there have been times where I've run this generator for a total of about four days because we had one major outage and uh, for us, that's a long time to lose power. One thing I really like about this generator is that it will run overnight. I'm able to top off the tank, go to bed, get a great night's sleep, wake up in the morning, it's still running, and I can just keep it going. If you want to see another video about a generator that's great for RVs, you can check out this video right here. I want to thank you for watching today. If you've not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel or followed us on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, I invite you to join us. So thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.